Hello and welcome to this week's preview show. Ahead of this episode, we thought it was the perfect opportunity uh, to shine a light on the excellent work uh, that's being done for the Jordan Sinnott Foundation. Everyone at Huddersfield Town was devastated uh, when we heard and learned of the news of, of Jordan's passing. Um, he was a really, really good character um, around uh, the club and the academy. Uh, so today, uh, we want to basically look back at, at his career, um, what he was like off the pitch and the excellent work uh, that these guys on the call have been doing uh, with the Jordan Sinnott Foundation. So I'm delighted to say I'm on the call uh, with Danny Ward, obviously Huddersfield Town striker, uh, Rotherham United midfielder Matt Crooks and uh, Scunthorpe's Academy, uh, <laughs> Scunthorpe's assistant manager Mark Lillis. You all okay? Yeah, very well, very good. good. Thank you. Okay. Excellent. Uh, Wardy, we'll, we'll start with you, obviously. Um, the Jordan Sinnott Foundation, talk to us about why uh, you were integral and a key part of setting that up. Uh, well, me and Sin became mates when I first joined Huddersfield, so about eight years ago. Um, and, you know, we were best mates, you know, ever since. And, uh, Obviously, with the with what happened, um, you know, I wanted we all wanted to be involved in some way, and making sure his memory lives on, and um, you know, t together with his his mum, um, you know, his his Mrs Kelly and his brother Tom, um, obviously started off just collecting the shirts and going from there really, and then after that, it's everything sort of spiralled, and you know, there's been a lot of, a lot of hard work gone into it. Um, and it's you know it's come together well. Crooksy, I can imagine you all as as a group when when you heard of the passing, you were all devastated. But you use this opportunity, like like Danny said, to to help his his memory go on. Yeah, pretty much straight away. I think um, I know I had it in my mind that I wanted to do something to to carry his name on. Um, I didn't want it to just be uh, forgotten about. Unfortunately, I know that happens sometimes with obviously big news at the time, and then kind of gets forgetting about. So I wanted his name to, to be carried on and what he stood for to uh, to be passed over into into different stuff. And the charity was a good way of, of kind of honouring him. And uh, we've got the foundations in place to do that now. And it's just about uh, continuing to do it. It's not going to be like a, a one, two year plan. It's something that I'll be doing for the rest of my life. And I know what we'll be doing as well. So um, it's just about remembering him in, in the right ways and helping others through that. Yeah, and, and the initial support crooksy was incredible, wasn't it? In terms of the number, the vast number of, of shirts that you received with his name and number on the back. Yeah, I think Wardy touched on it there. Like the, initially, we just thought about the teams that he played for. That was kind of the first idea, and then someone said, "Why don't we just try and get a few shirts from obviously the contacts that we've got in the game and through Sid's so friends." Um, so within two days, it was scary. And obviously social media played a massive part. Uh, and then we had just teams from all over the world sending shirts. And it was, uh, it, it took me back really when I walked into the, to the room for the first time and you saw the shirts strung up and know Lil was there as well. And it was just, it was, uh, it was incredible. It was emotional, but really, really incredible to see um, just the amount that had been collected. What, what was that like for you, Lil's, when you saw that? Oh, quite powerful, you know, and, and just typify Jordan, you know, how, how he was liked. It's not just what he's around him, all the people that he made friends with. And he would have been, obviously, I didn't follow him when he went to clubs as a, as a coach with him, but he would have gone in there and brightened the place up, you know, and um, and then that, that it's shown you with all the uh, all the shirts that were that were hung up there. It was it was magical to see it, like, you know, and his family so proud of him. It, it was brilliant. It was, I know it was his passing and that, but it was, I was proud to be there and be part of um, his friendship. When when you saw Lil's, the, the amount of work that uh, a lot of the players that, that you were with in Huddersfield Towns Academy that you worked with had, had done all this work to, to set up the charity in, in Jordan's honour, what what was that like? What did that feel like for you? It's the togetherness, you know. I try to create a togetherness at uh, the academy at Huddersfield. Four and a half years of there, we're, we're all in it together, you know. And, and, and that is 
that's football, you know, we're, we all we all look after each other and that's typified it with, you know, what they're seeing and, you know, it's just maybe the lads that I've played with them, but there's, been, there's a lot of other people behind the scenes I would think that's, you know, behind it as well, not just, you know, uh, the football bubble, not just footballers, you know, there's a lot of people in, in there that um, don't get recognised, but, um, you know, you know, that's that's it really. Yeah. Wardy, tell us who, who's who been involved, who's played a real key part in, in the foundation. Um, well, that's gone back right from the start when we started collecting the shirts. There was a WhatsApp group set up and there must have been, what did say, up to about 40 people in there. 50, weren't there? Loads of people. The 50, yeah, so there's literally so many people helping out um, in order to set the um, the charity up, which is sort of emotional and Manila there with it. Because obviously, he's, you know, his, his mum, Mel, um, Kelly, um, Tom, his brother, and then there's, there's me, Steady, a few of the other mates, there's Steady's brothers, Ali and Joe. Um, and there's obviously Smiths down in Cardiff, who's, you know, he's played a big part. And there's and there's, there's so many people that, that's, that's, you know, jumped on board to help. It's been brilliant, really. Just shows, you know, um, what kind of a, a guy Jordan was, and how much everyone wants to help. Um, so, so looking at that, yeah, there's there's been so many people helping, which we've always needed because, um, as we found out, setting a charity up is is not the easiest thing. Um, <laughs> yeah. But luckily, there's been that many people coming forward to help us. Um, you know, you look online and you you read stuff about setting a charity up and it's just pages and pages and pages and you don't know where to start. Um, but luckily for us, you know, we've had so many people helping us and uh, we're pretty much there with it. Yeah, I can imagine for you it's that collective support that, that's that been the biggest thing. There's things going on all the time, isn't there, to, to raise money for, for the Jordan Senate Foundation. Just talk us through what's been going on, how much money... Uh, has been approximately raised so far? Uh, I'm not sure about an exact figure, but I know the, um, our friend Ali Lee, um, he did five, five kilometres. Was it July that he did it? Uh, yeah, July. In July yeah. did 5K every day, didn't he? Yeah. And he raised the best part of 12, 12 13, grand. 13 grand. Yeah, yeah. Fantastic. Um, so this, this stuff like that done is obviously um, what Huddersfield are doing with the shirts, which is obviously, you know, fantastic. Um, but there's there's been loads of loads of things going on. Um, you raised some money doing the the quiz, the Zoom quiz, didn't you? True. Mm, um, yeah, I did so I'm not, I'm not sure. quiz, yeah. Yeah. So there's so so far, you know, there's been loads of people helping out and doing loads of other things. But then we can obviously set it up in the future where we can. You know, do charity events and I know we're, we're trying to do a, a charity football match which obviously with COVID kept getting pushed back and so we're obviously going to delay that but obviously that's that's in the pipeline to to get sorted out so it's been it's been really good. And just sticking with you Wardy obviously when when you joined the club uh, on the first day you signed obviously I was here and you said I, I want to take number 25 I'm not normally bothered about numbers but uh, in Jordan's honour, I want to take number 25. Then when you heard um, the initiative that, that Huddersfield Town were doing, what was your initial reaction? And were you taken back a little bit by by what the club was doing to help the foundation? Yeah, I was. I mean, when Dave first told me about it, it was, you know, I was, I was really pleased. I thought it was such a nice gesture from Huddersfield to do that. Because um, obviously Dave knows um, Jordan from when he was there playing yeah. um, so I just thought it was a really really nice touch from Huddersfield to do that yeah, it, Crooksy I can imagine for you obviously um, being a former uh, academy product academy graduate here that for you as well that, that must have meant quite a lot yeah um, I, was, I, was, I was really touched by it I mean a lot of stuff that Huddersfield did the fans included it, it really took me back to be fair um, I think obviously you we know we, we spent a lot of time there as as kids and obviously coming through, but um, I didn't think it'd have such an impact as obviously the fans, what they did, um, but the game and stuff. Um, and yeah, it was it was crazy really. 
but like uh, Wardy said, I remember when he texted me and said about the the initiative that he came up with, and it was just such a, a nice a nice thing for the club to do. Obviously, didn't have to do that, and obviously, we really appreciate what they've done. Yeah. Lou was obviously just sticking on that. Obviously, you've you've been at Huddersfield Town as a player and academy manager for a number of years. For for you in particular, I can imagine you you weren't overly surprised because you know the the like community aspect of Huddersfield Town and how much it takes a responsibility in in making sure that other people are, are okay. Yeah, that sums up the club, doesn't it? Huddersfield Town. I was there obviously over my career for about seventeen years, but um, it didn't it didn't you know it did not surprise me what they were going to do. You know, we we did the bike ride thing that people say oh it'll only last for a year and then I think it lasted over twelve years. I think now with this COVID we can't we can't do it, but. You know, I did a, I did a few of them, so I knew what was going to happen. But to do what they did was fantastic for me as well as um, seeing these young players, you know, um, being together and and playing. And it, it, it just sums up the club, really, you know. And uh, let's hope we can keep that and they can do well this season and get up that league, you know, and and be pushing for a playoff spot because, uh, you know, all the lads deserve it. And, and the fans, and they, and they like the oldest real people, they tell you what they see, you know. You know they're down to earth, and uh, if there's somebody that they want to, you know, be part of, they'll be part of it. Yeah, absolutely. And Crooksy, where where does the money go um, that that you've raised so far? Who who are you trying to help with this foundation? Um, the idea is obviously Jordan had a real passion for sport, um, so I want to help uh, kids that aren't as privileged as us, uh, but through sport. Um, so obviously with the charity, we've got to kind of find a uh, a niche that we feel we could really push and uh, we feel like that's that's going to be our, we'll have to find a certain age range where uh, you'll be eligible for grants, etc. But um, I think we're going to be open to anyone across the country who, um, like I say, is in less privileged position but want to get the support and use it to better their lives and we'll hopefully be able to help them in some way. Yeah, it's, it's absolutely, absolutely fantastic. It, it, Wardy, we'll start with you. Obviously, your your relationship with Jordan. Just tell us how how that grew over time and, and how good of friends you became. He tried to steal them off me. <laughs> oh, he does. He does. He me to this. <laughs> um, yeah, obviously, Sim was in the academy when I joined, um, and he was he'd, he'd come train with the first team because you know, he was he was a quality footballer. You know, deserved his opportunity in the first team. Um, but obviously we realised that we were both travelling in from Bradford, so we started started car sharing and then ever since then we were kind of inseparable. We like to include Tree every now and again, just to keep him happy. <laughs> um but no, we were just inseparable on and off on and off the pitch. Um because we he literally lived five minutes away from me. Um and then obviously last year he was best man at my wedding with Alex Smithies as well, so you showed our friendship sort of stayed close, you know, for the best part of ten years. Um, so yeah, he was a he was a good lad. Even when you were at uh, when you left Huddersfield Town, obviously Jordan as well. When when you were apart, were you still messaging, talking almost every day? Every day, yeah, we'd, we'd at least message each other every day. Most nights, FaceTime each other. Um, so yeah, it was literally. Or... Pardon. With... With Crooksy as well, or do you just? <laughs> I, I get the last five minutes, so they talk for an hour, and then they give me five yeah. minutes, and I, I'm in. <laughs> <laughs> Crooksy, I presume uh, you you obviously knew knew him through through the academy. Yeah, I obviously got to know him through the academy. He was in my age group. We joined pretty much the um, the, the same day, uh, the same week, really, um, and then. Uh, funnily enough, we both got released from the. I think it was Lily did it actually upstairs in the old port cabins. Released us both on the same day. I remember he went in first, and I like came out. He came out, and I just looked at him, and he just gave me like a, a smile. And we both knew we were going to get released, but it was just stuff like that sticks in your memory. But uh, now, obviously, we both left for this field, and um, like like Wardy, we, we all kept in, in good contact, and. Um, just stayed best mates ever since. Obviously, I've been around the country a bit, but he, uh, he always made an effort to come see me and, and uh, likewise. And just, 
he just had that uh, infectious character that you wanted to be around. What what was he like away from the football pitch? Um, it's just a, a, a laugh a minute, honestly. He had like a really chilled out vibe to him, but if you wanted to have a laugh, he'd, he'd be right there in the middle of it all. There's a picture at Wardy's wedding, which I think something's not perfect. He's like on the dance floor and it's like a bird's eye view and he's like throwing up the comfort in the air and everyone's just like laughing at him. And it's just like a perfect, perfect picture of him. So, yeah. No, fantastic. And uh, Lil's obviously, See, you knew him from the from the academy as well. You actually gave him his first team debut at Huddersfield Town, didn't you? Is in a one-all draw against Leicester City. Yeah, um, he deserved it to be truthful. The minute I seen him play when he was younger with Crooksy, and you can spot players, and you're thinking. I remember him pinging this ball. I think we might have played away um, at Coventry in the under 18s or somewhere, and he just pinged this ball, and I thought, wow. <laughs> that's what to do. He just had that in him, and that. But I only seen him obviously as the. I I, I was like hopefully the the dads for for a lot of the academy players. Where I, I wouldn't uh, still am now on social media. If anyone wants to chat, you know, privately, I'm there, I'm there for them. So I took it by that. You know, they were my sons, and he was one of my sons. So um, for him to play, make his debut, and and actually, I think he got man of the match for it. Yeah. Um, he proved to me and to the people upstairs that made the big decisions that you know he could handle playing for Huddersfield Town and pulling the shirt on, and that was that was big for me and the coaches that was working with him as well. But uh, I knew that he had a he had a smile, you know, when we used to have a bit of laugh and joke obviously in training, and you know I'd make one or two jokes because I, I like being out amongst them. And I knew when he when he all left the academy. You know, you'd be up to something good, but it—that's it, it's, what it is. Friendships, you build a relationship. You, you FaceTime at night. That's that's football. Some that's the other side of football, and you'll stay, and you'll all stay, and we'll all think about it for the rest of your lives, guys. You know, you'll you'll keep your bond and your relationships for the rest of life, and that's what the good thing for me. Uh, when I got the tic tac from there, four and a half years, I was there. It was like, well, I'm leaving there, like, and there's going to be a lot of good lads out that that will all stick together over the years even if they're not in football they'll still, they'll still keep in contact and that's a really powerful thing in life because you do need that you do need that support especially when you're you're not feeling too you know bright and you may be in a dark place you do need people like you can ring uh, and it's important that and I've always you know I don't fo well I follow people on Twitter but I'm always there for them and if they see that you know I'll, I'll, I'll message them privately I don't want anyone else to see it to see if, if they're okay, if they need if they need a bit of mentoring or so um, that's important for me to make sure that you know they're still doing what they want to do and they're enjoying their life and just go and express themselves like these guys are doing now, still in the game and uh, obviously Jordan would have would have still definitely been and he would have played at high level. Sometimes he didn't get the right break and that. But um, no, it was a fantastic guy. Just uh, when I first seen him, they're all great guys. I mean, I was eighty six with all, but he had that little cheeky smile, didn't he? He had that little glance, you know, his teeth <laughs> gone brightly, and, <laughs> and he laughed. You know, I remember we making me laugh, and he started laughing. And I remember him going to his car; he was still laughing like, and I was <laughs> laughing. I think he got home, and my missus said, "What are you laughing at?" I said, "No, no, John, it's just made me laugh." So. <laughs> It's that, you know, but that that's what that was him, you know what I mean? And he would have been with the same lad, especially on a night out, which must I tell you what, I wish they would have invited me. I would have been buzzing. <laughs> <laughs> I can imagine you've all got some uh, some pretty memorable and interesting stories from him, Robin. Yeah, I'm not sure if they're uh <laughs> not the right so I will tell you afterwards. <laughs> <laughs> and obviously you you're all at Huddersfield Town at the same time. What what was it like at the at the club back then in terms of uh, in terms of the the atmosphere the relationship between everyone? It's a good one. It we had a good good group yeah. of lads, I think. Yeah, yeah, it was it was. I think well, obviously I'm not there now, but um, the club was kind of going through a phase when it was changing from the it was kind of the League One to Champ Club, and now it's uh, obviously established Champ Prem Club. So it's it's changed a lot since we've left, but. I remember like just being in, I don't know, everyone just seeing together, like even if you were like a 21s player and like first mm. team would all mix together, like obviously that's um, come to fruition with our friendship, me and Wardy, Gazza, John Sturds, uh, Smiths, 
um, like all, all the rest of them, it was just um, a real a real good mix, really. And uh, I look, I we we saying we had some of the best times stuck in those port cabins, freezing cold. Uh, there was Dwayne as well, uh, who's obviously playing at Derby now. Max Leonard, uh, Lloyd Allenson, he's done like golf days for him recently. So uh, we had some some funny times in Huddersfield uh, back then. Yeah, Mark, you you must have had some good times with these guys as well. Yeah, yeah, definitely. Yeah, I mean, um, I used to hear stories about them going out and that things like that, but that stayed with me. That stayed with me. That I was like that. I didn't, <laughs> I didn't want in the club. Keep the chair. But they, they, what? 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 what they, they, they don't need to know that. <laughs> young lads are going out and having a right time. Fair, fair enough. As long as it doesn't affect what they're going to do in their training, right? So what? Like so, but. Um, no, we had some good times there. You know, um, obviously big decisions had to be made, but we had some good times. I'm so pleased. A lot of the players that we helped to develop are still in the game and still um, doing well. Um, you know, and when I see the lads on, on the telly, um, I feel really proud that I've been part of their career. Maybe only played a little bit, maybe this much, but um, played a part of it and, uh, you know, I feel really good on this show that I can talk to these guys, you know, because yeah. I'm not I'm not talked to them for maybe good, a good few years, you know, but they've yeah. gone on and uh, developed and grown as men, and you know, some of them now will have families, some of them will be married and have babies and all that. That's part of your, part of growing up in it, part of your journey in life, and uh, just en enjoy it and embrace it, guys. Yeah, no, absolutely, and, and and the work uh, like I said earlier the work that that you're all doing with the the jordan Sinnott foundation is is absolutely fantastic and incredible um to, in in his memory uh, we'll, we'll move on now obviously um to uh this weekend's game um crooksy you had a really good year last year didn't you with uh with rotherham united yeah it was um it was a good deal so we got promoted as a squad so that was good um i enjoyed my time i played a lot of football which is what i wanted to do um, I've kind of gone on a dip from Rangers to Northampton and it's been up and down so it was nice to have a bit of stability and uh, be back home really back in Yorkshire um, and play football so probably said played some of my best stuff last year obviously it was difficult halfway through uh, with, uh, with stuff about sin um, and then obviously with, with Covid so um, it was a tough time but it made me probably more determined to do well for him uh, and thankfully got got promotion, which is kind of the goal I'd set myself, especially after he passed away. So that was nice. Yeah, I can imagine for uh, for both of you in particular that after his passing, it, it, it gives you extra motivation almost to to have your career almost for him. Yeah, yeah, definitely. I think it's you kind of playing for him at the same time now. It's not just for yourself. Yeah, um, you've always got people behind you that want you to do well and Sim was always one of them and uh, it'll be a driving force for me going forward uh, in, in life really not just not just in football uh, trying to be the best best person I can because um, he he was he was probably one of the best people that I've known in my life and I'd kind of want to carry on carry on that way for him obviously he's got his own family that me and Wardy will no doubt be a big part of and, and try and look after the best the best we can yeah absolutely Wardy, when the fixtures came out and, and you saw uh, you were looking at who, who we were going to face, was the Rotherham game one that was particularly interesting for you so you could play against Crooksy and obviously against one of your former clubs? Yeah, definitely. I mean, when you look at the fixtures, when they come out at the start of the season, you always look for certain fixtures like big derbies or clubs that you've played at or clubs where, you, where your mates are at. So obviously I was looking for the the Rotherham fixtures and the Cardiff fixtures because I still know quite a few of the lads at Rotherham. Um, so obviously I'm absolutely gutted to be missing that. I've been on at Steve Physio for the last two weeks trying to rush back to see if I can be fit, but um, unfortunately... You're playing them, though. I'd be no tell, wouldn't I? <laughs> uh, so, but yeah, you look, you look, you look for them fixtures. Um, so I'll just have to get the get the return leg at our place. Yeah. Sharpen right. the elbows. 
<laughs> Crooks, when you when you found out that Wardy wasn't going to obviously make the fixture, for you it must have been a little bit of of a dampener because yeah, you're a professional footballer, it's a competitive game, but knowing that you could have played against Wardy, both of you on the same pitch for Jordan as well, I, I can imagine not knowing that that's going to happen in, in this game was a little bit disappointing. Yeah, it is disappointing. I mean, as a club, we were buzzing because we don't want to play against Wardy, really. We'd rather it be someone else. So we're happy that it weren't Wardy. Um, but no, like you say, it's, it is nice to play against your, your mates and it's not often that people can say they've done that, played f- football, but play against the best pals as well. Um, and obviously with this year, it extra special 225s going up against each other, but there's, a, there's one more game, so hopefully we'll both have a good season up until then, get picked and, and play against each other. Yeah, well, 100%. How, how are you feeling, Bordy? You getting there? Yeah, good. Uh, ahead of schedule, which is, which is always good. Um, it was a uh, it was not the worst hamstring tear, but it wasn't great because obviously the tendons were involved. But uh, but yeah, I've been back out on the grass, um, back out on the grass again tomorrow. So it's it's looking good. It's feeling really good as well. So hopefully I can push on next week and and be back after international break. I'll be well. Yeah, I, I can imagine for you, obviously after um, having a shorter preseason, coming in playing in the preseason friendlies and. And then picking up this injury, it's really frustrating for you because you're just getting to grips with how Carlos Corbran wanted his, his side to play. Yeah, definitely. I mean, like I said, I only had about two or three weeks off, but I've kept myself fit and I was in good shape. I wasn't struggling at all. And so to pick up this, this injury, you know, it was frustrating. Um, but it's just part and parcel of football and you just got to get your head down and work hard in the gym and come back fitter and stronger um, but like I say I feel really good um, so I'm just itching to get back on the field now Yeah absolutely Lil's Crooks has come some way hasn't he since uh, since the academy I believe he played at centre half on his debut in, in 2014 now <laughs> banging the goals in <laughs> fun isn't he Played all over played centre half centre forward back, <laughs> back, whatever but he played all over but um, no it was good it was good to, to work with him like and um, like it's good that the, the the lads are talking and having a bit of banter with each other. And what they're saying there is, you know, there's in, he's got an injury and that, and um, you've got to be positive, you know. And that's what we try to do at the academy. We, you don't just try and develop footballers; you try and develop the old person. So off the field or just on, obviously on the pitch, yeah, they've got to be. But how they are off the field and how they, you know, we want them to uh, respect each other and have a trust and respect with each other trust and respect with the coaches, you know, and that was a big thing for me. I, I wasn't that bothered about how they were doing on the pitch. Um, it was, you know, behind the scenes, because you don't know when young players are under a bit of stress or whatever, but I used to tell the young coaches that, get to know the player. Don't just get to know him as a foot, you know, as a footballer. Get to know what he's like, his background's like, his mum, dad, whatever, what, what's happening in the family. Get to know all of that, and then you can make judges, and you know, with them. Um, well, it's great to see the lads, and like you said, it's be, obviously Wardy is not going to make it, but it'd be good for me uh, next season to watch that game with the two 25s playing against each other. It'd, it'd be brilliant. Yeah, it would be absolutely, absolutely fantastic. And obviously, uh, Wardy, you played under Paul Warren um, at Rotherham 2016 17 season. When what was he like, first of all, to, to work under? I'm going to tell yeah, him this. Was... What? I'm going to tell him what you say here. <laughs> She's so he absolutely loves him. <laughs> Does he, yeah? Absolutely loves yeah. him. <laughs> he, was the, uh, he was the fitness coach, obviously, when I first joined, and then he did it, you know, took over when managers got sacked, and then they eventually gave him the job. You know, he's obviously done really well. Um, but yeah, I had a really good relationship with Warney. Um, so it was, you know, it's, I've always kept in touch with him, um, you know, since I've left Rotherham. Um, but no, he's, he's a good guy. I don't know, Crooksy loves him. <laughs> so say yes. All right. <laughs> Gaffer, isn't he? <laughs> Crooksy, when you, when you joined Rotherham, did you... Uh, drop Wardy a message just to see what the club was like, what what Paul Warren was like. 
Um, I, can't, well, I can't remember really. I think it was Richard O'Donnell that, uh, did I tell you? Did, did you tell me that I went, I can't remember. You will have done. I will have done, yeah. Um, no, I think the, the, the Gafford like tries to make you not sign. He has this like, that's his way of signing players. So he tells you how hard training's going to be and you don't believe him, but then it's 10 times as hard as he says it's going to be. <laughs> and then he's, like, afterwards he says, well, I told you it was going to be hard. But no, um, he's, he's kind of similar to what Lils was saying. He wanted to find out what you like as a person and if you're a good human being. And um, thankfully I passed his test and uh, he gave me the opportunity to play in the championship, which after my only other performance, which was for Woodersfield at centre-half, I kind of felt like I had a point to prove because I mean, didn't, didn't go the greatest. That's, uh, yeah. How have you found the first three games of the season? Um I think we've equipped ourselves well. We've um, had three tough games, not been much in it. Um, but we've got four points, P- possibly could have had more, but champs all about fine margins in it. Um, and sometimes, sometimes it's just one moment of magic from from a person on either team that wins a game for you. Um, but I think we've got more than enough in, in this squad to, to really compete. And I think in previous years, it's been more a case of wanting to stay up rather than this way of looking upwards and wanting to actually do something in the league rather than just trying to starve off relegation. Yeah, that's fan- fantastic to hear because obviously since uh, since Wardy was was there, uh, he's probably told you this, but he picked up the Player of the Year Award 2016-17 and Players Player of the Year Award 2016-17 as well. I don't know if he's mentioned it. He's not mentioned that, to be fair. He's so well done, Matt. <laughs> Fantastic. Uh, Lils, I just wanted to catch up with you finally. Uh, new role, obviously, as assistant manager at Scunthorpe. How, how have you found that, first of all? Fantastic to get back in. You know, I've been out for quite a while, which, um, you know, I, I celebrated my 42nd plus fat birthday uh, in January, so that meant I was 60. And uh, I must say, to, to get back in um, was magic. Obviously, I got a call from um, Coxie that, um, that who, who took the job. I was just coming out of my care home on the Friday. Um, I just finished my shift at half three. Everyone was on, ready to go to the pub, have a few beers because it's been a long week and that. And then uh, Coxie rang me and just said, uh, what was he up to? I said, I'm working in a care home. It's really good. I said, what are you up to? He said, I've just got the Scunny job. So I, said, oh, oh, I thought you meant you were in a care home then. <laughs> well, you're not that old, yeah, yeah. No, no, we don't. Still 23 up there. <laughs> so, no, he, he just said, What you up to? Uh, he said, I've just took the Scuddy job. He said, Do you fancy coming as my number two? And I was like, Wow. Because I remember working with him well, many, many years ago when he was at Scuddy as an 18 year old. I looked after him. I, I was about 29 then, and a few young players I looked after him. He got his move to Villa and then he's had a decent career in his first management job. So I thought, well, and I asked him why, and he just said, well, you, you did a few sessions when, when I was at Watford. Um, he just said, I just, he was always going to be my number one choice. And when a player that you've worked with before tells you that, wow, that's a really great part on the bat. And especially with being out of work for, oh, it must be 16, 17 months. Um, you see the other side of football, you see, you see the other side of life. You've got to stay straight, strong, stay strong. You see some dark times sometimes, you've got to snap out of that pretty quick and you've got to talk to someone. But being in the care home for nine months, is, uh, was, I just needed that. Whether someone up there you know, looked down on me and said, you know, you need this journey. And then to get back in the game at 60, um, I thought, wow, this is, this is great. But I'm, I'm still exactly the same on the grass. Obviously, I can't run around or crosses like them lads can do anymore. But um, I can guide people and, and, and have a chat with them. Because I understand the, what the footballers are going through. I understand what they're going through if they're not having a really good spell. They need an arm round. And that's been great. I've just been like smiling when I get out on the grass because we've got a decent training ground here just next to the ground. And um, we're hoping this season, I know it's no cliche, but we're a very young side. They made seven signings before we got to me come in. And we're just working with them and trying to get them better and trying to you know, get decent... Um, run in this league, in League Two, and then just trying to develop, develop players to go and play higher. And that's, you know, that's really important for me. Go and play higher. You know, I know 
and you know make some good money as well as being as part of being a footballer. Um, so that's what I'm up to at the minute. Uh, stay down here a couple of days a week, but it's about an hour's drive from Huddersfield, so I'm I'm all right. But uh, I'm back in, so a lot of people that's out of work, not just in football, the way the coronavirus has gone, feel for them. So you know. I'm proud to drive, you know, to drive in the club and, and get changed and try and pass my experience on to the staff here as well as the players. And uh, we're doing all right at the minute. We get, we're getting a good togetherness, which I think is so important. And there's a lot of the lads are building relationships because the lads will know where you, a new guy comes into the that, that's come into the club, a new player. You don't really know him. You've never met him in your life, and then you start building a relationship and a friendship that lasts, like I said, for. For years and years and years, so um, that's what I'm up to. Yeah, I, I just want to touch on the point that you mentioned. Obviously, uh, you, you said you were working in a care home. Um, to talk to us uh, about that and what you were doing um, doing there, especially when coronavirus first hit. Coronavirus kicked in. We were on the front line, so we were we were in amongst it. So all 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 the, all the residents in there that were all you know we. We had to. We didn't look after them, but we had to. We had to do a lot of cleaning. Um, we were called. I was a porter and a, and a bus driver as well. So we were driving. I was driving a minibus, so I'd be taking blood samples and urine samples down to the hospital for the residents. I was picking um, some of the residents up, but when it kicked in, I could only have one in the van. I had to wear all the mask and everything. I was part of people who passed away, making sure that um, we, we moved the body to, to the morgue, uh, which I felt very proud about. Um, but going into the room, obviously they, they were wrapped, they were wrapped in, in, in a white blanket. We had to move them onto the trolley and then take the, take the body down to the, to the morgue um, and make sure that the family were there and everything was safe with them and leave them there for how long they wanted to be, the family. But, um, Obviously, with the coronavirus kicked in, sometimes they couldn't see the family, you know, because uh, it wasn't allowed in the care homes. But I felt proud on, on doing that. I've never obviously done one in, the, in my life before. I remember moving, lifting the, the, the lady on, uh, who was actually 94, because you have to put on who was, who was in there. And she was still warm. And I was, I, I, I didn't, it didn't frighten me. I just felt proud that we put her to, laying her to rest. And then I did, a, before I left, I did another about four or five, um, you know, moving bodies and that. So you're seeing a massive difference in the bubble of football. You know, when everyone were, were, worked as a team, to be truthful, you went in at half seven for a brew, quarter to eight, the bell went, and everyone went off on the on the all directions, getting on with their work that they do. I'm saying it's similar to football. When, when, the, when the whistle goes at three o'clock, everyone knows the role. So... Uh, Worked a lot with the dementia people who were in there, made relationships and friendships with, with them guys. And there was one uh, chap in there, he was a Man City fan, and he, he remembered me. He was 96 and he remembered me playing for, for Man City, so he's got a great memory, but he, he, he definitely got dementia because he'd, he'd, he'd call me Mark for the first couple of days, and then all of a sudden he'd see me put a thumb up, Albert, how are you doing, Albert? So I said, I'm all right, thanks, I'm okay. So I went from Mark to Albert uh, in the space of about two days. But no, it, it was a fantastic learning curve working in there. And some great people and the nurses were fantastic to, and the carers with the people, fantastic. Um, and it was just uh, it was just like going into a family and when you're going in and getting a hug off your, off, off your family. And, and that's how that care home was. It was in Presswich in Manchester. It was a Jewish care home. Um, so I had to learn the culture which I'm still learning now, but um, no, it was, it came out of the blue. I, I was minibus driving there and then I became a porter there. So um, I'm, I'm so pleased I did it, you know what I mean? Because it was, uh, it helped me because, you know, like I said, I've, I've been out of football a long time and it was at the time where I'm saying to myself, well, that's me done in football, you know what I mean? But there's a part of you when you get a job off where it doesn't leave you as a player or as a coach and you think, come on, I'm going to give it one more go. And um, that's where Stuntop gave me this opportunity, which hopefully we're going to take with uh, both hands. And that's my waffle, sorry. That's it's quite incredible, I think. And Wardy Crooks, yeah, I can imagine from, from knowing Lils that you're not overly surprised by, by the fact that he's, he's done that work and, and gone to the front line in, in what is 
and has been a very difficult situation across the country and the world. No, it's um, it speaks for of his character, really. I don't think you find many people have been in football for as long as Lil has and then go into care homes to, uh, to help others. Um, speaks about who he is and just finding friends wherever he can. That's, I think that's what he's trying to do, just making friends wherever he goes. But um, no, fair play to you, though. It's um, some effort. Thank you. I, I suppose, uh, just, just to wrap this up, that that's what this call and this preview show has been all about, it, I think, anyway, that this is bigger than football. Things, the, the community aspects, the living in Jordan Sinnott's memory, the, the foundation, Lil's going and working in a care home as well. So much more things, isn't there, that, than just football, Wardy? Yeah, there is. Um, and obviously, football helps us, you know, to to be able to achieve achieve these other things. But like I say, it's there is there is like so much more to the to the that comes from the football. I think as well. Um, but no, I'm just touching on what Lil's was saying before. Um, just I think it's obviously great what he did. You know, working in the care home. It's, it must have been tough, but it just shows you the. The, like I say, the type of character he is. Um, but no, it's, it, it really is, and it, it's, it just shows, you know, the community side of it. It's, it's, it's great. Uh, Wardy, Crooksy, Lils, thank you very much for, for joining us. Uh, Crooksy, good luck for this weekend. Not too much good luck, obviously. Nah. <laughs> Wardy's shaking his head. Um, but yeah, thank you all for joining us. No problem. Yes, yes, yes. One-one will do me. I sit on, on the fence. <laughs> ah, Two-nil, Huds. Yeah, go three-nil. <laughs> 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 you too.